Hello and welcome to a very, very special edition of the Blue Monday podcast. I am delighted to have as my guest this evening um, the word legend. Let me say the word legend is often uh, banded about, but this one is a true Ipswich Town legend, record goal scorer, um, league championship winner, Division 2 championship winner, and one of the original four inaugural members of the Ipswich Town Hall in fame in illustrious company with Mick Mills, Johnny Walk, his colleague, Ted Phillips. It is none other than Mr. Ray Crawford. Ray. Good evening, bless- Dave. Oh, good, mate. I'm very good, thank you. How's, how's th- first of all, thanks for coming on. And just a very quick, while I think about it, very, very many thanks to my um, a long-time podcaster subscriber, Tim Pashley, who got hold of you via, I think, his, a relation of his partner, Andrew Moon, I believe, who works for um, Radio Solent, I believe. And he kindly gave me yes. your contact details. So many, many thanks for that. And I'm so pleased I've got the opportunity to Ray, to hear from you and, um, yeah, and, and to meet you. It's a pleasure, absolute pleasure. And me too, Dave. And um, I listened to the, the game on Saturday and it's... Oh. Uh, oh, what happened? <laughs> well, hey, do you know what? I was one of the... I don't know if you call it lucky or unlucky, Ray. Um, I put my name no. forward in the ballot and was one, I think I told you earlier, I was one of the lucky yes. um, 2,000 to get a ticket and it was... Yeah, it was heavy going, mate. It really was heavy going. I mean, OK, we are we're suffering terribly with injuries at the moment. But um, yeah. yeah, they're just the performance. Portsmouth, I don't know if you saw it, were a yard sharper than us and could have been four or five easily. Yeah, so I believe. Yeah, no, they look. Yeah, I was listening to Andy Moon, so I'm glad he gave you my number. Oh, good stuff. No, no, thanks for that. Thanks for that. I do well, know first... Andy, yeah. Well, first of all, I really just really wanted to obviously cover your cover your career, obviously your career at Ipswich, and then perhaps following on from that, one perhaps a little bit of um, insight into one other particular match that obviously you're very well known for after your time at Ipswich, but mostly obviously we're an Ipswich Town podcast, so you know your time at Ipswich. Um, I mean, just just quickly, Ray, I've read your book and it's quite well, but just just take me through just quickly. How did you come to join your early career, and how did you come to join? Um, Join Ipswich. I gather Sir Ralph was rather persistent in um, in in obtaining your signature. Is that right? Yeah. So what what happened about a year before I actually signed for the town? I came up and played in Portsmouth uh, reserves, and oh. uh, at that time uh, Ipswich Town were over at Norwich, right, and playing a game and. Um, I'd had a good game up there. I was thinking I scored three or four goals actually in the reserves <laughs> against um, an Ipswich Town side, and um, and it went from there. I think and um, Sir Alf, you know, um, there tried is, to but... sign me. I wasn't yeah. that keen actually to uh, to come along and play for the yeah. town because I was with Portsmouth, who were in the first first division, and yeah. um, Ipswich Town was struggling in the second. So. You know, it was something that I didn't really want to come to the town, but the manager, Freddie Cox, had just taken over at Portsmouth. He didn't rate me. He didn't want me to stay. And um, and Alf did. And, uh, you know, he made me so welcome when I first met him that, um, you know, it was a joy to come to Ipswich Town with a manager who, who wanted me to play for the town. So uh, that's how it happened. I mean, could you tell right from the start that, you know, Sir Ralph had, had that, had something about him and, and where it was ultimately going to lead? Or had you had no, no, no idea at the time, really? I guess it was a tough um, one. Well, at, at the time, we, you know, like everybody in the club when I was there, he was football daft. You know, Alf sort of, you only had a conversation about football with, with Sir Alf <laughs> and Alf as he was at that time. And, when we used to travel away and on on the on the trains, he'd come in our compartment and talk. And when the conversation ran out of football, he'd that up and it. go. He did, you know. That's all we knew Alf about. It, it, he was he was so football minded that. Um, so so would know, you say he was just supposed to just was... talk about football? Would you say he was somewhat aloof then, slightly aloof, or just yeah, as you say, he didn't really want to know, as you said, anything else but but the football. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he had that manner about him that he was he was a gentleman, 
yeah. You know, I'd been yeah. I'd been with a couple of managers who hadn't, um, you know, they t- they told you off in different words. But Alf, <laughs> Alf wouldn't come in and say anything. Um, yeah. On that day or, or about that match, he'd wait three or four days before he would consult you about the way you played and what you were doing and what you were, he expected you to do in the next game. And, so, Ray, um, you mentioned. Sorry, Ray, you mentioned the trial game and, you know, the game at Norwich and you scored four goals. And obviously, you know, scoring goals was a theme, well, not just through your Ipswich career, but right throughout your career, I mean, obviously. So uh, just looking at this, made your debut, Swansea away. Um, oddly enough, lost 4-2, but you scored You scored two on your debut. Memories of that at all? Can you remember much about that? Um, well, actually, yeah. I, well, we lost, didn't we? We lost at yeah. Swansea. My first game... We, we lost at Swansea and then we were down in Wales two weeks running and the following week we were down at Cardiff <laughs> and we won, we won, we lost at Swansea and then we, we beat Cardiff 2-1 on theirs and from then on to the end of the season I was, you know, scoring quite well and I got to about three or four games before the end of the season and Alf put, called me in the office, he said, I'm I'm not going to play you anymore this year. I thought, that's a good move, isn't it? <laughs> and I didn't play about the four, last four games of my first season. And um, Boy, because because <laughs> what, he was he was scared that other teams were going to scout you and you were going to, you know, be poached, <laughs> or do you think? Or? Well, uh, there, was, there, was, there was a few approaches because I was, I was mentioning the news of the world that certain clubs wanted me and Wow. I knocked the door on a Monday morning and had a word with him. And he said, boy, do you want to go? And I went, no. He said, well, what, what are you bothering to come in and talk to me about it? I said, I just wanted to know if if I they'd mean, a, a, you. And yeah, I mean, that was a... About the, the subject, he just, you know, didn't want to talk to me about it. And a theme right through the season. I mean, you. But I mean, incredible. So you only um, what thirty games, twenty five goals that first season. I think. I think the club we finished just below mid table, mid table in Division Two. But could you see, you know, from that season and then leading on to obviously the next season, fifty nine sixty. Could you see things starting to develop then, or was it not until you know promotion the season after, perhaps that you could really see when. Obviously, um, the team that, that, you know, the great team started to develop. Is that really when it took off the next season? Or could you see signs of it the, that very first full season that you had, 50, 59, 60? Yeah, I think the second season, yeah, I think that season when we, we didn't get promotion, Alf was bringing in different players and bringing in, he was strengthening the side. Some of the players he had in the side were, no disrespect, um, were getting on a little bit, and probably in that division they would have probably held their own. But he was obviously looking to get higher, so he needed to bring players in, which he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get so, and that's that was our plan. You know, we just bought players, in. and obviously for the next season you were well for that season fifty nine sixty. I think that was your first um, combination with. The great, the great combination with Ted, Ted Phillips, yeah? What a lad. Do you know what? Well, I did my national service and so did Ted. And we were both right. in Malaya. We never met up. We never, we, I didn't know Ted was out there. He didn't know I was out there until we started talking. About 18 months after I was with the town, we got on the conversation about what we'd done earlier in our career. There he is, my mate. And, um, uh, and you know, I was in Malaya. And I said, well, I was in Malaya. And then that's incredible. how it was. I I played for the Malayan uh, F, F, uh, FC and went on tour wow. with them to Malaya. And yeah. I'm sure if that, Ted was out there, <laughs> he'd have been alongside of me. Ray, I read a lot about Ted. He was a bit of a character, wasn't he? He liked a prank or two, didn't he? He was a character. There was. There would never be another Ted Phillips. There could be another. Is, I mean, never a Ted Phillips. Well, I, 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 I think you're being. <laughs> I think you're I mean, being. I think. Told us what to do and what not to do, but I'm sure he didn't tell Ted anything. <laughs> Ted, if he did, Ted never ever done what he was told. He, and is he it true? Just, that- 
Yeah. My father my father used to say in later later times when you, do you remember in the seventies and it was well you played against him, Ray. We'll, we'll get to that later on. Um when they used to say Peter Lorimer had the hardest shot in football and my father used to shake his head, he said, that nah, weren't well, nowhere near as far as Ted Phillips, believe me, nowhere near as hard as that. Oh why I, I got no end of goals from Ted's shots where the keeper thought he had it, but it would come yeah. straight at and it would bounce out, and I knew. I, I just used to follow up, and a little tap in, goalkeeper right. was thing for the ball, and and, and it, Ted was unbelievable. So, Rach, is that where you saw, is that where you saw yourself as a sort you know a bit of a predator? Did most of your goals come from inside the box, you know, six yard box like that? Yeah. Inside the box, rarely yet scored goals outside the box, and got a couple now and again, but <laughs> mate. He said, "Get, I got you. What are you doing on the wing?" Fantastic. I said, "Well, I was on the left wing, didn't I? I was a left winger with a right foot." <laughs> and uh, and he said, "I don't want you out there and out there. I want you in the six-yard box." And that was, you know, down to Alf and obviously Ted's shots where the keeper couldn't hold them. And I got little tap-ins, and so, you know, I used so to work hard to get your goal. You don't get them for nothing. You've got to keep making yeah, those yeah. runs. You might make two, three, four, five runs and then want to come along and you knock it in the back of the net. You just described it. Tell you, you just described, and I've heard people talk talk about him like that. Gary Lineker, exactly the same. Never scored a goal outside the box. Always on no. the half turn. Um, just looking for those little bits and pieces around the, you know, around the penalty area. Six yard box, always there. That's 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 how you that's you know your description there. It just makes me think of um, you know how Gary Lineker was described. That's right. When I, I I I went to Wolves and Stan Culler said to me, "Why don't you shoot outside the eighteen yard box?" Yeah. And I said, "Well, I haven't got a hard enough shot. <laughs> I always goals around the six yard box, and and that was it." Brilliant. And, did you uh, listen? I got did you, did, Ray? Did you have a little? Did you and Ted have a little side bet going on as to who would be the high, the, you know, the top goal scorer at the end of the season? Did you ever get involved in any of that with Ted? Talked about it. Never even hinted about it. Yeah. We just went yeah. out and played. We played yeah. Leeds United at home on Saturday. Ted headed it on to me. I headed it back to him, and Ted was 25, 30 yards out. And he whacked it into the back of the net. And Jack Charles said to Billy Brown, did you see that? He, he said, unbelievable. All oh, right. This, is gold. this is gold. This is absolute gold, my friend. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, so, it, it, so, it was fantastic. So the, it start, that partnership starting to flourish. 59-60. You, yourself, 36. It, it, it was just, yeah, just natural. So, we never worked at it. We, did, we didn't work at it. It, it well, was just natural. Well, I tell you what, something he, obviously you know, clicked. He, we just went out and played. Something, something obviously clicked for the pair of yeah. you in the next season, sixty sixty one. So you get there. So you, you know, you've been, yeah, you know, you had a reasonable success the season before, but sixty sixty one, you finally you get promotion from Division Two. I mean, these stats are outstanding. So the pair of you scored seventy goals. So I think the town, the team scores a oh, hundred no. league goals, and you score seventy between <laughs> you. You, you score, you score forty goals. He scored 30 goals. I mean, it's just absolutely mind-blowing. So, Ray, just tell me a little bit. So, now the side is starting to evolve and we all know about the, you know, the withdrawn wingers. Just can you give me a little bit of insight how, how that, you know, how that initially worked and, and came into being? Well, it, it just said it was the way Alf Ramsey played the game. He didn't have overlapping fullbacks. So, I mean, a lot of teams that we played against had fullbacks that overlapped. He didn't. He had Jimmy Lebesser and Roy Stevenson, who yeah. just used to drop back in that position, get the ball from the fullback, perhaps, or the defence, knock it up to Ted or myself, and then we just, oh, it would go back into midfield. They would play eight wide, either side, and we'd go again. And 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 that's how it was. I mean... Nobody ever picked it up. It took them. It took them twelve months to pick that up. Yeah, we'll get. We'll, we'll get. We had deep line, deep, yeah. line, deep we'll, line wingers. Yeah, amazing, amazing. We'll get on to that. So, so obviously, so you, you know, like I said, forty goals for yourself, thirty goals for Ted. 
and you go into that 61-62 season. What were your expectations going into that season? Was it purely just purely survival? Look, if we can survive a season, maybe then, you know, see how it goes. Or were you just so confident after, you know, obviously winning, getting promotion, winning Division 2? Do you feel that that confidence sort of carried over into the into the next season? Didn't, didn't even think about it. Nothing ever, was, ever was talked about it. Alf yeah. Ramsey said at the start of the season, you can all go up and get yourself a new pair of boots. That was a sports shop up in the town. Oh, so yeah. we said, yeah. So I went, there was a lovely, he gave us, I think Alf gave us about £18 that we could have a pair of football boots from, having won the second division. Wow. And then we go, I'll come back and I'll say to Alf, they've got some, a, new, a new football boot out there, Italian soft. Can I have those? He so he said, um, "How much are they?" I said, "Oh, I think they're about thirty pound." He said, "Yeah, of course you can have those boots." And I turned to walk away. And he said, "As long as you pay the extra money." <laughs> just <laughs> we brilliant. just won the second division, and, and oh, we're man. going up. And yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, he says, said, "Yeah, as long as you pay the extra money." <laughs> that is that is. Just- he was so tight fisted like that, Alf, but just uh, priceless. Well, I tell you what, Ray, they obviously, if you did go those boots again, they, they, <laughs> they certainly hold, they hold you in good stead for that season. So they were a cracking pair of boots, yeah, they were. And again, I'm a bit, a bit, uh, even I'm a bit, a bit too young to, to remember. I, was, I think I was born to look, look, literally two months after you won, you won the championship. There you go, spoiler alert that season. But when did you first realize again? My father tells me of, um, one great game, one great game early season, I think, against Burnley. I mean, look at the side there, you know, um, unbelievable. One great game early season against Burnley where I think um, you'd lost the away game, 4-3. And Burnley were a top, top side, top, top were, side. In yeah, games. they were. Could have they even... Won, um, I mean, they won the, they'd won the league the this, this season before or... Season um, or two, yeah, at Spurs. They won real, the yeah, they had about six internationals, didn't they? Yeah, and, and we, then so, we, we started our first game against Bolton, and we got a nil-nil draw. And then we we go we go to Burnley, and we get done about six-three, I think it was at Burnley. And then we got Man City at home, and we get beat again. So yeah. we was all a little bit edgy. And then Burnley turned up, and we walked them about six something. I think all the whole five front players Incredible. scored. Yeah. Incredible. We all scored. So to that, really look, looking at that team, the only real addition to that team was um, was Dick, Dixie Moran, who who just made up made up the front, you know, played up with you and um, with you and Ted, yeah. That's right, yeah. A, a, a really, really good footballer. He yeah. never stopped running. He was could pass the ball. He could tackle. Yeah. Um, we, we'd gone to Scotland the season before, and. Um, had a few days in Scotland at, at John Cobbold's uh, Lock Rannick uh, home up there. And Alf went missing. And we all said, where's, where's the manager? Where's the manager? He said, he's gone to look for a player. And it was Dougie Moran. We didn't wow. know at the time. Dougie was playing in Scotland and Alf had gone off and seen him play. And obviously he thought he was the one we wanted. And he was the only one at that time that came in. And then... Kenny Malcolm got injured after three or four games, and Johnny yeah. Compton came in yeah. and left back. Yeah, um, it, it was a wing half, young wing half at Chelsea. Came yeah. in, never played left back before. In he went, left back, brilliant, absolutely. He just listened to what Alf told him. I mean, and, and it's just incredible. If you if you look at the appearance records that season, I mean, probably I don't know, like three quarters of the side, probably eight or nine of you in the side played over like. 38 games it is just unbelievable I mean and you know when you look at the injuries in football today okay Ray you know they say today's football is perhaps faster more athleticism but to, for, on the account to that they've got all the sports science I mean you guys just had a guy with a with a, with a bucket of water and a sponge pretty much and some smelling <laughs> stuff that's pretty much it wasn't yeah. it yeah that's just that's how it was wasn't it I mean you just it was a, a bucket of water and a sponge and that was it and yeah. when you went down, when you went down, I remember playing the game at Portsmouth and, and the trainers come on, he's put the sweat sponge over my face and I said, it's not, it's not my face, it's my ankle. 
and I'd had a broken ankle, and they, they carried me off. I went to the hospital, oh, and, the, and this fellow's putting a sponge on my face, and you're like, no, I that's all different, I knew in those days. Right, different different breed of player in those days, Ray. Different different yeah. breed of player, different breed of player. So, and I mean, and also another key game early on in that season, obviously the great Spurs side, the double when I think they came to Portman Road, ultimately to do the double. They came to Portman Road and you beat, I think you beat them 3-2, again, fairly early on in the season. Um, again, that must have been, certainly after a game like that, did you then start to think, oh, hang on, maybe, you know, maybe we're not quite so, you know, cannon fodder or, you know, maybe, we, maybe we've got some, a chance to consolidate here? We, to be honest, we just didn't think about the next game. When we were right. playing, we just concentrated on the game that we were playing. Never, ever thought about the next game. Never, ever thought about what tactics there were or yeah. who we were playing against. We just we just went out and played. Every, yeah. I mean, we, had, we, we were so friendly with one another. We always used to go out on a Wednesday night and play darts in the darts league to raise money for, for charity. Yeah. And there was hardly any of the first team that didn't actually turn up and play darts against the locals. It was just, it was just, it, it was like like a fairy fairy book story. It's like, you know, it just wouldn't happen nowadays. It couldn't happen well, it's nowadays what it, because you wouldn't be allowed to go out drinking on a Wednesday. Well, exactly. Well, they well, yeah. And you'd be lucky to get all all, uh, all the first team players to go and play darts with the with the fans or whoever. It just wouldn't, or obviously wouldn't wouldn't happen these days. You know, wouldn't happen. And you know, you, the, Ray, I think. So when, but when can you remember sort of when? So obviously, you you know, you're up and around there at Christmas, and you're getting into the new year. Can you can you kind of remember when uh, sort of you know the press? And well, you can't really call the media because it was just really the written press at those days. In those days, can you remember when the press suddenly started to take interest and say, "Oh yeah, look, you know, Ipswich are in and around the top three, two or three. <coughs> and, you know, at that point, could you did you then kind of think, "Well, oh, this could." But again, you or, or did you just simply dismiss that? And like you say, it's the old cliche: you took every game as it came, as it came, and and that was simply it. No, they, they I didn't. I don't think we, we were up there. They they didn't think we were going to win the league. They didn't think we had a chance. They thought the big boys will start after Christmas to start to get stuck into Ipswich Town, and you know we had we had a few games when we didn't play that well. Um, but if you've got goal scorers, you don't have to play well because they get you out of trouble. I mean, ever since you know, I mean, we, we never ever thought about not scoring. Ted and myself, we had this little. Well, well. <laughs> I know we never said it to one another, but Ted wanted to be the top scorer. I wanted to be the top scorer because yeah. if you're playing football, you want to be the best. Of you, course, you, you, it's no doubt about it. They, you know, they're saying, "Oh." You know, I don't, I don't care who scores. If I never scored on a Saturday, I was miserable. Yeah, that was my yeah. job to score goals. We won six one 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 weekend. I think Dermot got three. Ted got three. I didn't get a goal. I, I was cheesed off. <laughs> well, there's there's the ultimate there's the ultimate goal scorer goal scorer in you, Ray. So yeah, Ray. So you're getting now into the into the running. So we're getting into sort of February, March. You you go to I think again what's still probably acknowledged as one of the great games in town's history. You go to Spurs. I think on a Wednesday, on a Tuesday, Wednesday night, midweek game. I think maybe early March. I think that season. So getting towards the running now, and you beat Spurs three one. Surely after that. And then I think it. I think you know I've read. Yeah, you know, I've read several books about this and pieces. And I think that is really when the when the national press did really start start to really take note. Would you agree with that? Can you remember much about that game? I think they said it was like 50,000 in White Hart Lane. The, the, the Spurs game was fantastic, really, because we just met, we all met at Ipswich Station at about four o'clock in the afternoon. We're kicking off about half past seven in London. I mean, would they do that nowadays? They'd be in a coach, they'd, be, they'd have this, that and everything else. We jumped on the train, we got to Liverpool Street, Alf leading us away onto an underground, get to Tottenham. You know, just we just walked along with the supporters. I mean, that just wouldn't happen nowadays, would it? It just, Correct. it just couldn't happen because they they'd be mobbing you and you know wanting autographs and everything. But in those, that's what happened. We we just went on there and then 
we did have a coach after the game. Well, got us a coach back to the train station, but um, that was it. You know, it was nothing special. We were going up there to play Tottenham, who probably thought they were going to beat us because if they'd have, we beat them twice that season. And if they'd have won both those games, they would have won the league. Because I think they finished third in the end. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Absolutely amazing. And I think I read somewhere, Ray, that I don't know if you could call this, but in the in the preceding games, preceding that game, Ted had sort of had a bit of a barren, barren spell and had been a little bit off form and hadn't really scored that many. I think post Christmas, he had a bit of a quiet spell. And I think I read somewhere that that game, he was just back to his, I think I heard him described as back to his rampaging best. I think, I think I, I read somewhere, <laughs> you know, he's raining, yeah. raining shots in from everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh he, yeah he was fantastic that night absolutely so I and, and then, we were, yeah go on Ray sorry sorry so I remember coming out when we when we beat Tottenham up there and we were, we had to come past the 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 um the Spurs uh dressing room and and Danny Blanchfire was sitting there still in his shorts with his head down between his knees Wow. I could not believe wow. what we saw when we came past that. I mean, he was a great yeah. player. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. don't forget, you know, that night who scores the Spurs that. goal, who scores the Spurs goal that night was um, Greaves. Jimmy Greaves scores for Spurs that night. Greavesy, oh. yeah, they, they brought Greavesy back from from Italy, and um, <laughs> yeah, Greavesy scored that night as well too, didn't he? Yeah, staggering. So say, we had the double over him and big, big Morris Norman. From from Norwich, he was an ex Norwich player. I love playing against that one because he said he was going to yeah, kick how you all over the place at Tottenham. When we came off, what coming off at Portman Road, he said, "Wait till you come the White Hart Lane, so I'm going to kick you all over the place." Well, I think, he never Ray, got, got anywhere near me. <laughs> you got to put it in perspective, Ray. That you know, Spurs were double winners, weren't they? So you know, I think only the first team this century, to the second team, maybe this that sorry, this century in the twentieth century, to do the double in sixty sixty one, the season before. So you know, to beat them twice, you know, coming from you know a little old country bumpkin Ipswich was just absolutely That's right. What, what an achievement! What an achievement! And just this, so you're getting towards the running series, running now over Easter, Ray. Um, Burnley, I think, have got three games in hand and there's not many points between you maybe two or three points between you i think okay, another big yeah. result don't you go to the highbury i think good friday and you turn arsenal over something like i think three nil something like that yeah memory memories of that one at all can you remember much about yeah, that we one went, we went to chelsea we went to che- yeah we played at home i think we with with arsenal on the good friday i think we drew one one didn't we i think you beat i think you beat them i think you won three nil there ray um, it, 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 I thought, well, at, at Highbury we won, but I yeah, think, that's right. I, yeah, I think we, I think we drew two, though. Then we draw two of the games, didn't we? Yes, draw so only we, last one, and then, and, and then could, we drew with Chelsea, didn't we? That's right, Chelsea, I think. I think Chelsea were ultimately to finish bottom. I think you were 2 0 down against Chelsea and came back, and I think came back and got a point late on, yes. And, and then we went to Arsenal and. We, we all came together and we won. I think we won three one. I think Ted Ted got one and I got a couple. And uh, I think Ted had a thunder shot and the keeper couldn't hold it. And I just tapped it over the line. Uh, your typical typical I, goal, right? typical typical Crawford goal. Then yeah. Then I, I remember um, Terry Neal was centre half for the Irish inter- right. internationals yeah. playing for, high, for Arsenal, and I remember coming in from the wing, putting it through his legs. <laughs> seven megs because that's what we used to do if you if you put it through somebody's legs you just say megs yeah. and i put it through his legs and then I'd hammer it past the goalkeeper and um, uh, yeah well, we, it, was, it, it was great memories yeah Terry Neal obviously latterly to be Arsenal's manager in the um, in the cup final of course 78 all those years well 17, yeah. 16 years later, of course, 16 years later. So it's all set up, although I think Burnley have got a couple of games in hand. They're dropping points and suddenly it's all on that last, really on that last game. I think Burnley have got two games left. Um, we've got Villa at home. Burnley, I think, yeah. are playing, I believe, already relegated Chelsea, I think. So oh, no. how it transpires, if Ipswich win, Burnley have got a win and also, I believe, get a point. From I think their last game, so Burnley have got have got a win. How that's how it all, or maybe even win their last game, but that's how it all works out. So you get to the game at home to Villa, 
um, who I think you'd lost to earlier on this season. I think they had people like Derek Dugan, I think, was playing for them yes, up front. Yes, I, did, I hadn't, yeah, the Duke. Well, I was with him at Portsmouth. I was there when he wow. came. He came as a 19 year old and uh, the Duke. And uh, he, um, yeah, I, I hadn't played against Spiller up there because I was playing for the league side or an international game. I know they went ahead and played the game and I, I didn't play up there. And um, obviously, um, they they didn't want to lose to Ipswich Town. Aston Villa no. came with an idea of, of, you know, and they shut us out, didn't they, for about an hour. And then um, I remember, get, I think John Owlsworthy come up, didn't he, and headed that. Oh, that, that's the one that John Owlsworthy, brilliant. It headed it onto the bar and it dropped down and I just followed there's up. That, and there, I was there's, a, that fi- I, there's that finish, Ray. Look at that. How far? Oh, about no, three yards that, out. That's a, long one, that's a long way out for me to score a goal. I normally <laughs> have a bit nearer. <laughs> and, then, and, and then... What about the goal kit? What about the referee? Do you know what the referee's name was? Go on. Crawford. No way. Seriously. It definitely. <laughs> you look it up. I think it's Ernie Crawford, the referee. Uh, <laughs> no relation to no, mine. No relation. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sweet. Ernie Crawford. Superb, superb, mate, superb. And then, and then you wrap it up and then another goal, I think, you know, a few minutes later, it's 1-0, I think. Uh, from what I've read, you know, the tension suddenly is relieved and yeah. you obviously a break away and you go and get 2-0. So at the end of the at the end of the game, there's no way of knowing, you know, there's no way of knowing, no radio, TVs or anything like that. I think it's all pretty much done on the phone. And incredibly... We were, um, yeah, we were in the dressing room, weren't we? We went back to the dressing room and Alf was doing a... I think Alf was doing a little chat on the, the radio guy. Yeah. And the next minute, you know, it com- comes up, doesn't it, that... Chelsea's beat Burnley and oh, incredible, absolutely incredible. And your champion, I mean, everybody went mad, didn't they? They so all, tell me, all went just, mad. What are your recollections of that? Can you can you recall anything about the evening? Or I mean, obviously there was yeah, a civic the evening. Event. We all went down to Felix Darko, um, wow. and we stayed the night down in down in Felix Darko, and we all got drunk together. <laughs> <laughs> Who oh, liked yeah. to drink? Go on, go on, Ray. You can, you can, you can name names. Who, who was who, who was a social guy? Who, who would who would organise the social events if you went out in that team? Who was the who um yeah who, who liked the who liked the beer or two? Oh, we all did. We yeah. all all the lads. I can't remember anybody not Great drinking. Yeah. You didn't so you drink. Played... You know, we didn't go silly. Alf Alf said if you're going out drinking, you you drink up to Wednesday. I find. <laughs> Eight, uh, you have been drinking after eight anywhere after Wednesday. Whether the lads did or not, I don't know, but I didn't. I didn't drink a lot anyway. I just used to have a, a few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a so, few more. I mean, yeah. And so again, more. I mean, what you know, what you, <laughs> what a season, what an absolute, what a season. And look, Ray, and this leads to an England call up. Yeah, that was well. I got the evening. I got the England call up through playing with the lads. And I mean, if you get a fellow scoring goals, um, they were looking. For, they were looking for people all the time to play. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to get yeah. a couple of couple of games for England. And uh, we drew with Ireland, and we beat. Then I think we beat. It was it Austria, three one or something Austria, like that. Scored, you know, you yeah, score I got, goal, I got the England goal. Oh, superb! You still, still got your caps, England right? Goals, you got, you got, you got your... Oh yeah! yeah you, you know still, what? I got my cap. It came through the post. Oh, fantastic! It, my cap came through the post in an old envelope <laughs> that was half half ripped open. Wow! Put through my letterbox. And and just to you know, some of those players in that team, um, Bobby Charlton. Tell me about Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton was brilliant, absolutely brilliant, because he'd been in the. Munich yeah. aircraft, as you know, yeah. and um, yeah, but he was a very quiet person. Um, oh. just got on. I remember, I remember when he, uh, he Bobby got the goal against Ar- Ireland, and Alf Ramsey picked me up after the game at Wembley and brought me home. and He went, Bobby Charlton should have been going down the line and squaring up for you to score. You shouldn't have been going <laughs> down the line and pulling it back for Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Charlton, I went, all right, Alf. You know, Alf was like that, wouldn't he? He was taught he'd pick holes in different things. 
Well, tell me, Ray, did, did, did I read somewhere also? I think I read this in your book. That you actually got a knock. You were actually carrying a knock when you're doing your England debut. And you sort yeah. of, not say covered it up, but you so obviously desperately didn't want to miss out that, you know, you played and obviously yeah. you scored, but what, you scored, but you played That's with right. a, you played with a knock, yeah? Yeah, we yeah. played, we played yeah. on the Saturday um, against Wolves. And I got, yeah, I got six studs on, on my ankle, and it was I was in having treatment at Portland yeah. Road, and Alf came yeah. in and said, "You're all right to play on Wednesday." I went, "Yeah, I'll be okay." I, well, you, you you don't get picked play for your country every day, do you? I mean, you're not going to turn it down just for a little bruised ankle. Get out there and give it, you know, all you've got. So uh, yeah, I, I probably shouldn't have played, but I did, and I scored in that game, so. Obviously, it just, was the right thing. I just quickly write about your England. Um, also, um, a big, well, massive, massive Ipswich connection. That first game, none other than a certain Bobby Robson played. Yeah, yeah. Good. Tell me about yeah, his Bobby football. Good, good, good footballer. Good player. Yeah, Bobby was a very good, elegant player, wasn't he? He was yeah. one of those players that he was good control, good passer of a ball. You know, he, he was like a gentleman. But uh, yeah. yeah, a very, very good player. He played I, I that played point. against him when he was at West. It was at West Brom, and we went, we went to West Brom because we took everybody by surprise, didn't we? We went to West Brom that season and and beat West Brom up there. Yeah, you know, Bobby was yeah. in the side yeah. up there. Yeah. So did you ever tell me, Ray? Uh, did you ever play against? Probably preceded. You, you never played against Duncan Edwards. No, no, he. He he! I was playing for Portsmouth then when the Munich air crash. That was wow. that was tragic. That yeah. was tra yeah. tragic. That was um um. I was in the Pompey side and I got injured that that uh, weekend. And Man United came down midweek and um, I think we had a, we got a draw. But I didn't play. We it was three three with with Man United that day at uh, at Fratton Park and. Yeah. Um, and yeah, was, that was that was tragic, a horrible thing. And and so a bit disappointing, bit disappointing. You didn't add to your England caps, Ray. Yeah, really, I suppose. But I was fortunate enough to get two, so I was pleased yeah. with that. And um, you know, when you think of Brian Clough, who was a brilliant player, he only got oh, one cap. Just incredible, isn't it? Yeah, you know, just, Cluffy, just absolutely was, incredible. Cluffy was out of this world. So and then Brian things started. Was a great player. Oh, no, very much so. And then you get to the next season, 62-63. And again, I suppose the landmark game there is the, the charity shield when perhaps, um, who was always known as a great tactician, Bill Nicholson, had done his, done a bit of homework, Ray. Would you say that? Yeah, but they, they never ever say that we had 10 men. <laughs> OK. Larry Carberry, got injured. Larry Carberry got injured in the first five minutes. No subs, no substitutes, no, no players yeah. coming on or off. We had yeah. 10 men. Wow. Larry went and played on the right wing, but he couldn't run. And in fact, he was eight for about six weeks. And so, <coughs> so and also, yeah, I mean, he had he had done his he had done his homework on us. Obviously, yeah. he went man for man on Ted and myself. And he, right. not only that, he he he, he put people on uh, Jimmy Ledbetter and Roy Stevenson, who supplied our goals for us. You True. know, our crosses, our goals. So, uh, yeah, he he done yeah. his he done his homework, but. When you're when you've only got ten so, men, yeah. So you win the championship, Ray. So this leads to um to Europe, European football. Who would have thought it? European football at Portman Road, yeah. absolutely, absolutely oh. incredible. Um, so the first first round, you play a team from Malta, the Maltese, Floriana. Um, <laughs> I suppose you'd say a bit of a comfortable win at home. Um, we had ten a, we had nil, a good you, 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 you managed yeah. to bag or well, half of those goals. <laughs> <laughs> Five. What do you remember? Yeah. However, then you play, well, and then incredibly, you're drawn against AC Milan. I mean, what a draw! Oh, fantastic! I'm I'm sitting at home. We didn't used to have to what? be at, at at Portman Road until 45 minutes before the kickoff. So I'm yeah. home at, at what six o'clock, and and I've got a brand new car because we won the league the season before. I go out. The car won't start. I've had to run down from Cedarcroft Road to Norwich Road 
to thumb a lift to get to Portman Road to play against one of the best teams in the country, in, well, in, in football. In Europe. And, in Europe. And I get, I, get, I get to Portman Road at 7 o'clock at night. We kick off at 7.30. And I've come what? in in the dressing room. And Alf said to me, come on, get a move on. Is there any, we kick off in half an hour. I said, oh, yeah, I've just been outside um, giving my tickets out. <laughs> I couldn't actually say, like, I've got a brand new car that won't go. <laughs> oh, so ridiculous. That... And then we went out and played well, didn't we? I mean, we, yeah, we won. We just, beat yeah, just a bit too much, wasn't it? A bit too much. And, of course, they went on to um, they went on to win the European Cup. So, again, the thing but, is that... And, and but they were, got... they, were diff- they were different, Dave. They were yeah. different to us. They were pulling yeah. our shirts and pulling our pulling the hair in the back of our neck and things like that. You know, we we were naive, very, very naive to yeah. um, in those days. Yeah, it, just um, just incredible. And and Ray started the great dynasty to this day. I mean, it hasn't we haven't played in Europe for a while. Still undefeated at home in European football. That's incredible. I think it's nigh on I think it's nigh on thirty games. Someone will put me right out there. But that incredible record still exists. So from for, you know, from back in your day, you were the obviously the forerunners, the first two games against Floriana, then against AC Milan, and then obviously the UEFA Cup games under Bobby Robson subsequent to that and latterly George Burley. So still undefeated at home after, you know, all these years. I think that's unique. That's your unique. I, I didn't. Unique. I didn't even know that. That, was, that yeah. is actually brilliant. I, I didn't it is, know that. isn't it? It is, and against isn't the greats, it? you know, Barcelona twice. Um, you know, all all the greats, just just absolutely, absolutely incredible. So Ray, you know, things start to, uh, you know, that 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 subsequent season, perhaps, you know, things, you know, start to start to fall apart, not fall apart as such, but obviously, well, this very much yeah. mirrors this very much mirrors the Robson years at Ipswich, where the only way well, perhaps Sir Ralph. Well, Sir Ralph, Sir Ralph went to in, went to manage England, didn't he? Yeah. So he he goes off to manage England. Yeah. We we haven't got a manager. The, the, the manager's job's been offered to several people who've turned it down. Then then Bobby comes along. Um, he was he was rather naive as as a manager, like most yeah. players are when you finish, and. Yeah. Um, he he knew what he wanted, um, but before Bobby'd come, I was having a drink with the chairman John Cobo because he, about my age, were coming back from 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 Newcastle, just been murdered up there, and um, yeah. he said, "What are you doing at the end of the season?" I went, "What do you mean?" I, he said, well, <laughs> "Do you want to manage one of my pubs?" <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the chairman saying to me, and I went, no, no thank, no thank you, Mr. John. I said, I, I want to go to South Africa, and he and there and then we're having a drink. He said to me, you can go on a free. Yeah. You can go to South Africa. Roy Bailey was out there. Roy Bailey was out there managing or something. Yeah, and Roy was saying out there. It was always done and dusted. Bobby Robson comes along. Uh, we've gone to Everton. And I've scored a couple of goals up there. And I thought I better go in and see Bobby on the Monday. Tell him I'm going to South Africa yeah. at the end of the season. He went, "What?" I said, "The chairman's give me a free transfer. I'm going at the end of the season." And it all blew up, didn't it? That's that's how I come to leave Ipswich Town uh, to go to yeah, play just, for Charlton. Just just prior to that. Just quickly, I mean, obviously, with, when the side, the, the championship winning side starts to go its separate ways, Sir Ralph goes, Jackie Milburn comes in. That clearly doesn't work. Um, there he is with look, Andy Nelson. Hey, and then, lovely, lovely, think, guy. I, lovely guy. Uh, the lovely, lovely yeah, guy. Too nice. Too nice, Ray, perhaps? Too nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he used to take us down the bowling alley, didn't he? Play bowls. <laughs> what do we want to play, you know, bowling alley? He was, he was a lovely fellow. He was, he was still playing. When we had... Fr- we had we had practice matches on the pitch. He was a, one of the best players on the park. Oh, he's a hell of a player. Wasn't he? He's a god at Newcastle, wasn't he? Absolute yeah. god up in um, up in up in Newcastle. So you yeah. you go to Wolves, Ray. You go to Wolves um, after two hundred. I mean, incredible September sixty three. You played two hundred nineteen games for Town up to that point. Uh, a ridiculous one hundred and fifty six goals. Quite ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and again, <laughs> success at Wolves over a couple of seasons, 61 games, 41 goals. You enjoyed it there as well, yeah? 
Yeah, I had a good, I had a good time at Wolves. I was just a goal scorer. That was all, wasn't it? <coughs> I knew my limitations. I knew my limitations. Stan, Stan Culler said well, to me once, "Why don't you score goals outside the box?" As I'm saying, and I said, "Because well, I've yeah. got hard enough." Now. And, and, you know, and so you you got to do what you what. It's no good trying to do things that you're not capable of doing. Sure, and a very brief spell at West Brom. Only a few games, still score goals, Ray. But yeah, not, not really work. Lucky, didn't yeah. really work out for you at West Brom. <clears throat> no, I, I'd, I'd gone over there and I played, I think it was either my second or third game and I, somebody studied me and I got a bad injury. Yeah. And then that yeah. was, then that, you know, Jimmy Hagen was a was a funny guy and um, I said to his son once at one of the dinners up there, I said, I didn't get on very well with your dad. He said, no, nor did I. <laughs> 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 and that said enough, you know. And that's what, yeah. If you were picking a team, you'd pick him. He was about fifty. He was the best player in the club. The manager, Jimmy Hagen, great player. Oh, mate, brilliant. And then, uh, and then the pool. You, you you get pulled back. You get pulled March sixty-five. Um, how does that? How how did it change? So you come back to Ipswich. Obviously, you get the opportunity. Bill McGarry's in charge there. Who, you know, yeah, Bill accounts, McGarry came up. Very, a very tough, yeah, very tough man, get... disciplinarian. Oh, hard, hard as nuts. We'd gone and play. <laughs> Before I met Bill McGarry, I'd played at Peterborough in the mm-hmm. League Cup. And it was nil-nil at home. He dropped. He, the manager didn't play me at home. It was nil-nil. Replay up at Peterborough. And I had one of those games when everything went well. I think I scored the first, made the second, made... Made the third, and then, as I say, after the game, Jimmy Hagen said to me, Bill McGarry wants to sign you. Come over to the Hawthorns at up past 10 tomorrow and meet him, which I did. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's, that's it. I, I came down on the Friday when he played on the, uh, I, I, you know, came back, signed for the town, and um, just started scoring goals again for him. So it was quite good. And I mean, and I think Ray, even in that, even in that sort of two or two or three seasons, you'd been away. Um, a lot of those players from the Championship side had moved on. I mean, obviously there was still the likes of Billy Baxter was still there, and um, but other than My other mate. than him, yeah, other than him, there really wasn't wasn't that many left of that side, was there? No, not really. There was a Tommy Carroll. Tommy yeah. Carroll was, I think, was there. Um, yeah. um, Ken Hancock. Oh, no, I think Bill McGarry brought him in, didn't he? Um, yeah, there was there wasn't many there. I think yeah. a, a few of the boys that were in the side, I think they were young players when I was when I was um, leaving the well, club. Ob- well, obviously, very very soon, latterly, sort of season or two afterwards, then a very young Mick Mills comes in, of course. Yeah, Mills, he played for you know he's on Pompey's youth team up here, wasn't he? Yeah, he's I Pompey's think they... youth team and lived in Guildford, didn't he, at the time? They disbanded their youth section, didn't they? I mean, again, could you see? Could you see? I mean, the career he was going to go and have. Goodness me, you know, captain Ipswich at a World Cup and you know, record appearance maker. Could you see no, that? No, no, he was. He was a, he, at the time. He was a cocky little bugger, <laughs> and uh, I, re- I remember Bill McGarry going to going to throttle him. He was going to. You do as you are told. You do what I tell you, and all that, and. Bill McGarry was very hard on him. Yeah, it's, and, and um, a young, he had the talent, a young didn't he? and one of yeah, my favourite players. One, one of my favourite players in that picture there, Ray. One of my favourite players when I first went to watch the town. Colin Viljoen, what a player! What a player, oh, Colin Viljoen. Fantastic player. Yeah, he played absolutely. in the youth, he played in the youth side, and Bill McGarry had to go out to South Africa to sign him on, didn't he? He wasn't coming back. Fantastic player. Didn't Colin I Viljoen think went home for the summer. And yeah. he wasn't coming back, and Bill had to go out and get him and bring him home. Didn't, bring didn't him back to, to get town. to get around his visa problems. Didn't um, was it employed by the Cobbolds as a gardener or something like that? I read somewhere. I'm pretty sure. So I believe, yeah, yeah. yeah. And just just quickly, just quickly. What, what about John Cobbold? Is was he as much of a character as you know everyone <laughs> reads and everyone? Just yeah. incredible, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a fantastic guy. Alf Ramsey used to have to keep him away from us. Because <laughs> he know, you know, we about having a drink, 
and that. And um, stop away from the players, Mr. John. Stop away from them. He said, I you can Bobby... get near them after the, after the game. But uh, yeah, yeah, he'd like to drink or two. When I when I first when I came back to the town, he used to, and I used to stop in the station hotel in Ipswich. He used to come down on a Wednesday night. He used to have a beer with me in the hotel there. Brilliant. And I yeah. remember yeah. he used to buy everybody a bar, a, a beer at the bar. I had no money. Yeah. He used to say to, to the uh, bar, the guy on beyond the bar, send me the bill. Yeah, yeah he, was, that, he was a fantastic guy. A one-off, a true, a true one-off. So Ray, you win, you win the, as you say, you win the championship. You, you, you're back in the, back in the first division again. Absolutely brilliant. And then, like you said, um, Bill McGarry leaves. Robson comes in. You then leave for, you know, you, you then sort of, you know, almost retiring from British football and move to, move to South Africa. I think you come back briefly and play for a little while. I think you initially play for Charlton, don't you, Ray? When you offered a contract at Charlton, I went, I went to Charlton after I left the town, which I wish I had never done, and yeah. then I went non-league with Kettering, and then so I was playing against John Charles actually when he was playing, wow. he was player oh, wow. manager. Yeah, player manager down at where was it? Um, Merthyr Tidville, something like that. Someone, like, yeah, someone like that. And we were having a beer after, and he said, "You should should still be playing in the league." And I went home, and that weekend I, we phoned Dick Graham up at Colchester because so I thought I won't go too high. <laughs> I, I wanted to get back in the league, so we phoned Dick Graham up. Dick Graham said to me, "Leave it with me," because I was still on. Charlton's F books, yeah. Charlton Athletic. Um, he said, "I'll do a deal with Charlton." He said, "Get you, get you back." Two or three day, days later, he phoned me. He said, "It's all done and dusted. Come down." So we went back to Ipswich, bought a house, set there, or was buying one, um, play for the Colchester, and then we we ended up having that great Leeds United win, didn't we? Well, Ray, I've got to say, I was, I was, I was speaking to a. A colleague of mine today, big football, big football <laughs> fan, and I said, "Look, I'm speaking to you this evening," and again he said, "Oh yeah, Ray Crawford, the guy who scores the goals for Colchester against Leeds in that game." So I mean, what almost your, which is almost like a swan song, you could call it, I, I guess. But what that, well, I mean, just what are your memories of that day, for goodness' sake? And I think, I think I read somewhere that the team was the team, not Chris and Dad's army, I believe, because there was a few. Um, a few sort That's of, let's right. say, elder, elder, <laughs> elder statesmen. Yeah, incredible. That's well, right. I mean, and again, obviously well known that the game was on match of the day that evening. And, you know, I've seen the footage since. I mean, what can you remember about that day, for goodness sake? Well, I think I think they just come out for a day out. They come, <laughs> they flew down before the game. I think they just thought, well, fourth division, you know. But we had five or six players who were well into their 30s, and for an hour, we turned it on. That's all I can say. We yeah. really yeah. played well yeah. for about an hour and 10 minutes. We played well. And then luck was on our side. We had a young goalkeeper, Graham Smith, in goal. Yeah. He probably played the game of his life because of some of the saves he made. Yeah. Um, I got a couple of goals. Dave Simmons got a goal. and. As I say, for the last 20 minutes, we were just hanging on. They scored two, but they ran out of time. And, um, yeah, well, well, yeah, fantastic. Fantastic still day. day. Still to this day, one of the great cup upsets. And, and mm. what, what everyone out there, especially some of our younger subscribers, perhaps should think, this was the FA Cup back then when it actually meant something. So, you know, Leeds, if you look at that Leeds team that day, all the players were playing that day. Hunter. Um, ten, the, you know, ten Bremner, Mick Jones, ten Clark, Clark, yeah, unbelievable. Um, um, just came off, you know, had been cup, um, the season before, you know, losing cup finalists to Chelsea the season before. We're going to go on and win the cup the season after. I mean, they were a top, top side. And then I think, um, again, what another great day out, although the result wasn't so great. I think then you have a quarter final against Everton up at Goodison, yeah. Oh, fantastic. We we played really well for 20 minutes. We murdered Everton. Chances fell to people who never scored goals or never scored many goals. Oh, just the wrong Chances players, didn't yeah. fall to actually the goal scorers. And, yeah. But, yeah, we, we enjoyed the day out. And, um, 
and it was it was a really good day out good good day out for the supporters we all went up on the train and come back on the train after and uh, yeah it was a, it was a great day yeah and no, and, and, and no, don't forget you know side, again, no again you know we talk about the great lead side i mean don't forget that was an Everton side that were league champions. You know the great yeah. Colin Harvey, Howard Kendall. You know that Alan Ball, that midfield, that midfield, and probably yeah, it was. I'm sure a young, a young Joe Royal, um, another Ipswich connection, a young Joe Royal up front probably. So, so Ray, then you, you, then you go on to, um, I think you go on to, uh, I think you have a spell at Durban City, and then you, then you come back and your youth coach at Brighton, and then a certain Brian Clough turns up. Is that right? <laughs> Oh, Cluffy! Yeah, he's what he was—he was a different class, Cluffy. <laughs> we we hated him down there at the time. <laughs> he was awful to us. You know, he just—he didn't. He had no respect for the players down there. I mean, I was a coach down there, and the, he said, "Get the lads ready for ten o'clock in the shorts and training gear." He'd turn up at twelve. <laughs> the players have been sitting in the dressing room for two hours on the backside in their oh, in their is. training gear. Just, just what brilliant. Did you, did, did you know him any? Did you, as a, you know, as a, as a player of your, you know, your standing? Did you know him anyway? Did you know him as a, as no, an opponent? No, oh, you didn't, didn't know really? him. No, no. No, I, I, he had a, he had an incident at Portman Road where he was having a fight with his own winger <laughs> because the winger wouldn't cross the board to him, so he went out and stayed punching him. I mean, if you look at, I mean, your goal scoring record is just phenomenal, Ray. But if you look at his goal scoring record, oh, considering he, he, he finished been, so young he and he finished so, it had broken all records. Jimmy Greaves, it had broken them all, wouldn't done. he? Yeah, he would incredible. have had records that no one would have ever broken. No, absolutely. He, he, was, that, he was that good. He was absolutely a really incredible. Good but and he, was, back, he was. Sorry, sorry. Ray. And then, you're, and then you're back to your beloved beloved Pompey again as, um, as sort of a youth manager and assistant for a good spell after that. Yeah, yeah, I brought a few boys through, um, you know, a few international players. Steve Foster, two centre halves, Graham Robertson, and wow. uh, Steve Foster. I used to go out and um, go around, the, go around the schools, go around the youth clubs. Had a lot of my friends. If you see anyone that's any good, who think any yeah, yeah. good, Chris Kamara, what about Chris Kamara? Oh, Cammy, Chris Kamara, I thought, yeah. in the navy. I, I thought I, in the navy. He said. Look, I said, oh, what do you mean? He said, well, he said, he's, 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 not, he's not English. I said, that, that don't matter. Yeah. I said, he's, he, you know, he's, if it, can he play? He said, oh, well, I don't know. You better come and have a look at him. And yeah, I had him tell. down at Fratton Park, and Ian St. John said to me, who's that lad? I said, oh, I just got him out the Navy. I said, um, he's still in the Navy, but he's he's coming to play for the youth team. Yeah. And um, that was it. He, he, where would he have been if uh, my pal hadn't recommended him to me? Uh, who, who knows? Uh, who knows, Cammy? What, what an absolute legend. I knew about Steve Foster. I must admit, I didn't realise about Graham Roberts. He was a tough, he was a tough player, wasn't he? Oh, my God. Oh, his wow. nails. Oh, he, my his, parents had a, his parents had a, a fruit and veg on, a stand on, on the markets. Yeah. And John Bond was manager of Bournemouth. John Bomb went to went to Norwich, and yep. the youth team guy at Bournemouth phoned me up and said, "Ray, I got a good kid here." I said, "What's his name?" He said, "Graham Roberts." I said, "Give me his phone number." He said, "Not on the phone. He's not on the phone. They haven't got a phone." I went, "Oh, all right. I'll send him a letter." So I sent him a letter, <laughs> told him to come up to Port to uh, Fratton Park, which he did with his mate, and. Because he, 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 him and his pal used to go everywhere together. He came up and you could see. Ian St. John said to me one day in his training, who's that young lad over there? I said, oh, it's Graham Roberts. He said, my word. He said, he's ferocious, isn't he? He used to be a centre forward then. He was a number nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had, take, do you know, size boots, size 12. <laughs> I mean, who wears football boots size 12? <laughs> he did. Graham Roberts did. You wouldn't get, I met you wouldn't want to get a couple, of, get a couple, of, a couple of, yeah, years ago. Last time I spoke to Graham, he came up here and played a charity match. And um, nice, oh, he, he was all hearty. But Jimmy Dickinson didn't rate him. So I mean, Jimmy Dickinson. That's why, he left, that's why he left Portsmouth. He left Portsmouth because Jimmy didn't rate him. I think. I think you're right. I think he, he actually left Portsmouth and went non-league again, didn't he? Before Spurs he picked him to, up. I think he went to Weymouth. Yeah, I think you're I think right. He went he to did. Weymouth, and then he was going to sign for. 
<clears throat> one club and he got hijacked, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, good. And yeah, another, yeah, went on, went on to play, <coughs> went on to play for England. Then, Ray, I think, you know, you, you, you finish your sort of football career for Fareham Town and, and sort of Winchester, some coaching there, some management and coaching there. Yeah, I had a good, another good spell in the, uh, in the FA Cup. Ah. Got fair, yeah, we, we, we did well. We got round to the first round proper in the uh, FA Cup, but, um, at Fairham, which was a outstanding achievement, I don't think they've got there that that far since. And um, yeah, I've, I've had a great time in football. I enjoyed it. Right, absolute, absolute yeah. pleasure. So you, so you finish your town career. So focus on your town career. Three hundred and fifty-two games, two hundred and twenty-seven goals, my friend. Never going to be separate. <laughs> never going to be surpassed. Never, ever, ever. Believe me, yeah. never going to be surpassed. I mean, Walkie got <laughs> Walkie got close to it, but with a, sh- yeah, a lot did, more, game, a lot more games, <laughs> a load more games. Probably almost not quite double that, but a lot more yeah. games. But absolute, absolutely phenomenal. So. I mean, I hear you now. You know, on occasions, you know, I hear you sometimes on Radio Suffolk when we're playing when we're playing Pompey. Um, you obviously still Ipswich still has a real, um, you know, deep place in your heart. Yeah, your time here and the, you know, love for the club that always comes across when I hear you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely to come up. It's a it's a pity we wanted to come up last weekend, didn't we? And yeah. watch the Pompey yeah. Ipswich game, but um, yeah, it wasn't not... to be was it? with all this epidemic out it's, 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 it's just not the heart out of football it's I think it has Ray I think it has like I, I went like I said I went for the first time obviously Saturday and it, yeah it's not it's not it's not great it's not great I've been following the games on on I follow but it's just it just isn't great Portsmouth look useful though Portsmouth have got yeah one or two one or two quite useful um you know useful looking useful looking players I think they'll be in and around you know I'm sure they'll be in and around the playoffs hopefully oh, I, um, hope, I hope so I think hopefully, as far um, as the town's as far as the town's concerned, we just hope we can, um, yeah, whether whether with this manager or not, we get all our these sort of injured players back. I think, and um, you know, start start putting together some results again because that's what it needs. Because it's not great down there at the moment, and um, you know, unfortunately. Well, they've only lost a few games. I mean, they they're, they're still about. They just got to. Hopefully, they will get it together again, as you say, yeah, when just, they get their, it's got, their players fit and uh, like they were when they start the season. And um, yeah, I knows? think so. you never know. Just got, just got to beat those teams um, in and around them, Ray. We can't beat those teams, uh, those top ten, any of those top ten teams. We just can't, I can't beat, unfortunately. But yeah, hopefully get get. Get the injured players back. Let's see a sort of better style of football there. And yeah, whether the whether the manager survives that long or not, we'll, we'll wait to see. But at the moment, it doesn't look like he's going anywhere. Um, he's going no. anywhere just yet. Yeah, it's sad. It, it, it's a sad time. But I mean, then you get a club like Sunderland who spends yeah. so much money, and 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 they're yeah. they're the same. They've got rid of their manager, and now they're winning games again. So it, yeah, maybe it's, it's a cruel game from the from the manager's point of view. It, it's a cruel game because your life is always in the players' hands or the feet, aren't they? Yeah. Because you know, yeah. if, they, if they're not playing well, and and you, you can only encourage your players to play, and um, it's up to the players, isn't it? You know, if they, I mean, if I hadn't scored those goals, we probably wouldn't. Have, and Ted hadn't scored the goals, we wouldn't have got promotion. But and having said that, we were quite a good football side. But you've got to have these people that can score goals. Ray, just 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 quickly, I've got, I've got to ask you these two. I've, I've done a few of these interviews, and I always ask ask these questions. Who would you say would be the best player you've played with? The best player, yeah, I ever played with would yep. be Billy Baxter. Really? Billy Baxter was a really good player. Gosh, he was a hundred percenter. He gave yeah. the club everything, and hardly said a word. Bill, he just used to go and play. <laughs> And, um, and 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 yeah. I, I saw him. I saw him play back end of his obviously Ipswich career. Um, and what I remember about him, and, and you read about him, not a very tall man, but superb in the air. Big spring on him. Oh. Big good in the air. Yeah, I think he was five foot eight and can jump six foot two. Sometimes <laughs> you get players six foot two and they end up jumping up and they're five foot eight. <laughs> a Billy Baxter and was. And tell me, Ray, your <laughs> hardest your hardest opponent. Someone, I mean, obviously, you got the best, you got the better of most of your centre opposing centre halves. But your um, your um, 
Yeah, your most uh, hardest opponent. <laughs> uh, I can't. To be honest, I can't remember. Possibly, <laughs> no, I can't remember. Oh, there's some fellow who used to play for Rotherham who used to kick hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> that was him, I think. I was never, never the star players. I always used to play well against the star center half. So it's uh, you know what I mean, the for instance, someone like. Just, <laughs> Bobby, did you have much success against someone like Bobby Moore and players like that? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic, Ray. It's been an absolute pleasure. I mean, I'd, I'd, you know, for all our, you know, all our, um, you know, pod listeners, obviously all Ipswich fans. If you had one message for the, um, you know, for the Ipswich fans, what would that be? Get behind the players and cheer them. They don't mean to play bad. They don't mean to miss goals. They are trying. So get behind them and cheer them on. Ray, it's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Thank you very, very much. I have absolutely, or you can see, I've smiled most of the way through. I've got a permanent smile on my face. It's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure, and 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 thanks to you. And and I've got to mention your good lady wife, who's your um obviously your your IT. Let's describe her as your <laughs> IT engineer. I w- yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here talking to you without her because she's she's the main one. <laughs> right absolute pl- a pleasure my friend thanks very Thank much you, and um keep safe and it's keep lovely. well give, give my give my regards to all the supporters you you talk to right and i let's will hope, and let's next- hope they go up.